So I'm Samuel, I'm, I work for Rivos, and uh, together with uh, Jiwen, we are, Jiwen Yao from Intel, we're working on the uh, RISC V specification for uh, called uh, CoveIO. Uh, it's a specification that uh, depends on a few other specs. Uh, one of them is Cove, which is a confidential computing uh, specification for RISC V. Uh, it also depends on H extension, which is the, uh, the virtualization one, obviously. And another one, which is uh, SMMTT, which is uh, secure um, uh, tables for, uh, for Risk V. Um, so I'm going to talk about CoveIO. Uh, just to, to be clear, uh, this is a not non-ratified specification, so it's still being worked on. Uh, anyone is free to contribute to it. Anyone is free to uh, comment uh, or change it. So. That's the uh, high-level picture for uh, CoveIO, and I think uh, one of my uh, one of the things I want to, to talk about during the, the few slides I have is um, highlighting the fact that uh, the, the proposed ABIs for CoveIO actually match pretty well what uh, what Alexei is uh, is building for uh, for TDS support in, in the kernel. Um, so this is a fairly loaded uh, diagram, but I think the, the most important ones are the. Uh, the uh, which are describing the flow between the host and the TSM and then between the guest and the TSM. And we see that uh, the host is basically going to request the TSM to connect to uh, uh, the device, uh, SPM connection. Um, then it's going to bind a specific TDI into uh, a, a VM, a TE VM, a trusted VM. And eventually, uh, there's a flow going down from the guest into for the TVM to say, yes, I accepted this device into my PCB. And this, this maps fairly well what, uh, what Alexa is, is uh, proposing uh, in, its, uh, in its RFP. I think it's, uh, the last one is not called start interface, but it's a validate interface from, from Alexa. Uh, so just, yeah, just want to highlight this uh, and at least once that, yeah, this, is, this seems that it's, it's something that's going to work with the, with the proposed approach. Um, yeah, so you have uh, two different interfaces with CoveIO, the, uh, the guest ABI and the, the host ABI. And those ABIs are part of the uh, high-level uh, uh, confidential computing ABI, the Cove ABI itself, which is the, the generic confidential computing for this file. So we in, we're integrating into, into the generic uh, confidential computing one. Few more details on this, um, and again to just describe the flow and how things would work with the with the CoveIO. Um, a few um, uh, prerequisites: um, the, the TSM owns the SPDM session, so the SPDM session that is that is established between uh, between the the, the, uh, the the host, the physical host, and the device, is driven and owned by the TSM. Uh, not, not and the TSM is going to is going to manage the uh, the TDs and uh, and the IDE keys. So the TSM is going to is going to own the T the IDE keys for for the uh, for the TTIE uh, IDE session as well. Uh, it also manages the DMA and MMIO mappings. I think it, all of this maps pretty well what uh, what other architectures are doing. Uh, and, and basically, what the what the proposed uh, stack set is is trying to implement as well. Um, on the other hand, the, the host VMM owns the physical device, so it's free to do whatever it wants with the physical device, which is what TDSP is, is here for. Um, it initiates the, SD, the, S, the SPDM session establishment, so it talks into the TSM to ask the TSM to establish the SPDM session. And then from there, the, uh, the TSM owns the, uh, the uh, SPDM session. And to do that, the, the specific CoveIO ABI is called Connect Device. Uh, so it, 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 uh, from, the, uh, from the host VMM into the TSM, asking the TSM to establish the SPDM session. Um, then once, if that is successful, um, the, the host VM is, is then responsible for binding a specific virtual uh, function of the, uh, of the device into the, into the VMM, into the, the TVM, sorry, the trusted VM, uh, through the bind interface uh, ABI. And, the, the, and, and this is what I also want to talk about in the next slide, is, in the, next slide is the, uh, um, the, the last step, which is basically for the guest to accept 
uh, explicitly accept the, 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 uh, the TDI is into its TDM. So there's a guess to a TSM ABI for this. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, so the, the one thing I want to I talk about, which is not, uh, we, 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 we haven't talked about that a lot yet, um, is uh, device verification. Uh, we've, uh, at uh, Lucas uh, uh, PCI authentication buff, we, we talked about, uh, a lot about uh, uh, PCI devices authentication. That's not what I want to talk about here. I want to talk about verifying a uh, testing to the device. So authenticating the device is, is something that allows you to tell you this, this, this is a genuine Samsung, uh, whatever, um, uh, Western digital device. Um, what we're talking about here is for the TVN to say, okay, what does this device look like? What is it running? What's its state? Which firmware stack it's running? And so on. And the PCI spec explicitly says the, the TVM should be responsible for verifying the device, doing the remote attestation or local attestation, doesn't, doesn't really matter, but doing the attestation to the device before accepting the device into its TCB. So here we basically are saying, and, and the proposal that we, that we want to, to maybe discuss is uh, a proposal for a split kernel user space architecture where the, the kernel would basically offload the entire verification of the device to user space. So we have this trusted device manager, whatever you want to call it, uh, as a user space component, as a helper for the device, for the kernel to say, okay, I, this device is authenticated. I know it's a, it's a genuine device. Now I want to verify that it's something that applies to the policies that user space is describing. So user space is going to say, I want firmware version one, two, three, and I want this device running in state in non-debug state, for example. It's a completely user space defined policy, and the kernel would just call into this, uh, this user space component to run all this verification, remotely, locally, doesn't matter, but the kernel eventually gets an, an, a reply from, from user space saying, okay, this actually complies with our policies. The, the, we, as the, the guest owner, have defined these policies and this device complies with it, so you can go ahead and probe this device and start allowing for running DMA, DMA transactions. Before the, the user space gives that answer to the kernel, we should not let the, 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 the device run any DMA transaction into the private memory of this, of this TVM. So that is a, a proposal, that's something, a component that we have to define, and it, it basically aligns pretty well with, uh, with what's, proposing for, what's proposed for the SPDM uh, uh, patch set, except that we're lacking the, the measurement uh, interfaces. Um, but also, I, I think in, in the uh, SPDM uh, patches, there was a discussion about uh, not binding uh, the device if it's not authenticated. I think we, we want to extend that, that to not binding the device if it's not verified, if we don't get this, this verification uh, approval from user space into the kernel. But, but that, that's just another user space policy. I mean, like, if, if user space is doing an attestation, user space can decide to bind or not. We shouldn't be putting that policy in the kernel. Yeah, correct. I agree. Yes, okay, definitely. Yeah. But but we shouldn't let the kernel decide make that make that decision without uh, a, a user space actually telling the kernel if it's if it's a if it's a, a, a trustworthy device. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I would like to know what uh, would it be possible or would it work for you to use Natlink? Um, uh, yeah. Or I'm definitely. I'm not jumping ahead to the, then the next slide. No, no, no. no that, 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 it's it's a good point. Yeah. That, that that's why you were telling you uh, at you about that CCFS or Netlink. I mean, in practice, we're not going to run OpenSSL directly. It, it, this is a user space component that's going to talk into the, into this interface, and Netlink is certainly more flexible uh, than than CCFS. So. I, I think we would prefer to have a Netlink ABI uh, as opposed to... Okay, I'm wondering, so uh, how would the, so the user space component in the guest, um, what it's talking to, where does, it, what, where does the Netlink connection end? The Netlink connection ends in the, in the kernel. W host kernel or guest kernel? Guest kernel. Okay. So the guest kernel would be expected to, to run your SPDM patches and so on. I think we have five minutes left, so maybe I, I can take a question and then let us yeah. say, I don't want to. Um, so. We talked about pair advisors earlier today. Yes. Would, we, would it be acceptable for, I mean, your interpretation of the spec, if that, I mean, if that manager was, was in the pair advisor yeah. and then just simply presenting it back to the guest? Yeah, I think, I think it's, it, it's in the uh, HCL uh, uh, talk, 
I think it, the paravisor would be running this trusted device manager legacy. VMs mm. wouldn't know anything about TDS. Yeah, so do, do you see that as a preferred approach, the, other the than trying to do case, that yes, in the guest? Definitely. In the paravisor case, the, I think the, the, the reasonable approach is to run this trusted device manager in the paravisor and implement all the verification policies in, in the paravisor. You, you can't expect the, the legacy VMs to, to know anything about that thing. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, I generally agree with this, right? We don't want to do the remote attestation, all the stuff in the kernel. But I'm a little bit confused on, because you said a few different things about we can't allow DMA into private memory until the device has been approved. But we could allow DMA into shared memory. Is, is that something that you plan to support? Because I think we should. I think, yeah, I agree with that. I think. Okay, so then I think that has to be a requirement of yeah. the scheme. Is, is, yes. and, and then after that point, you might need to reset the device in order to get back in, in, to start deeming in a private memory, right? Why would or, you need or, to or, or at least oh. or, or reload the driver or something like that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. Right. Okay. Um, Alexa is next. Uh, something I didn't touch upon is. Uh, is device attestation and firmware update, which is another can of worms, so <laughs> sorry about that. 